From the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Holy bucket. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you... Really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Like a Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything on the air. We discussed this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, we left some stuff out of the mix. Here's something that came up today. You're kidding me, right? You're kidding me. The Los Angeles Department of Water and Power came under fire yesterday for paying specialists. Now, this is the Department of Water and Power. And for those of you who don't live in the city of Los Angeles, the city of L.A. actually has a governmental company uh, that sells electricity and water to L.A. residents. So as you, uh, you know, many places, that's done by a private company like Orange County of Edison and others. I know up north you've got PG&E. City of L.A. has DWP, all right? So it's a governmental agency. And they are paying specialists at the DWP. Now, what, what kind of specialists do you think the DWP might need, the Department of Water and Power? Specialists on how to deal with energy crises in the summertime, for example. You probably need a specialist in that. Be a good idea to spend money on what do you do when everybody turns their air conditioning on on a hot day? Do you have brownouts, rolling blackouts? Do you, you know, get power from the power grid somewhere? Do you import power from somewhere? Do you do that? That would be a specialist they might need. Water. What kind of water specials would you need? Well, you know, we've had a, we've had drought conditions here in the, Los Angeles, over many years' time, We've had problems with the reservoirs, maybe a specialist to deal with some of these issues. What do you do about water wastage? What do you do about uh, sewage? You know, when you're disposing uh, sewage, uh, hopefully it's not going where it doesn't belong. We're not polluting the uh, the bays and the ocean and what have you. I mean, there's probably certain specialists the DWP would need. You know, the DWP is hiring specialists. Do you know who they're hiring specialists, uh, what they're hiring specialists to do? To show new and expectant mothers at the utility how to properly breastfeed their children. That's right. That's right. It's the Department of Water and Power. And breast pumps. Says here, the plan to issue another. They've been already doing this, but of course, no one's paying any attention. The plan to issue another DWP-funded lactation services contract. Drew Howells from taxpayer advocate Walter Moore, who pointed out that the utility's five-member board voted just last week for a package of new water and electrical rate increases. He said, you couldn't make this up. This is such a ripoff. You've got to wonder if somebody's cousin runs the lactation business. So if you are a lactation specialist, I want to put out the word to all the lactation specialists out there. Contract proposals are due at the DWP on March 7th. So you can actually bid this job. Says here, the utility, get this. This is what they're spending their time and your money on if you live in L.A., the utility posted a 56-page document 
on its website, seeking proposals from specialists who can spend 16 hours a week performing such tasks as workshops on pregnancy and lactation for employees. Says here, the winning contractor also would be paid to show employees how to use the department's breast pump program in traditional and non-traditional work environments. <laughs> like, for example, if you're on top of a telephone pole working on the lines, you might need to know how to use a breast pump up there. Kind of a non-traditional environment. Says here, neither the Port of Los Angeles nor Los Angeles World Airports, two other city agencies with their own budgets, have hired lactation specialists. Oh, don't give them any ideas. But it says here, the DWP officials say they've awarded such contracts since 1988 and argue that the service has improved employee morale and reduced absenteeism among new mothers. Jesus Christ. I've been doing some lactation consulting myself. Maybe I should go work for the DWP. The lady in Canada. The lady, oh, the lady in Canada we had on stage with us in Vancouver. Yes, the woman who lactated all over the audience. She'd be an expert. Yes. Art, that was before your time here. Yes, we had a 39-year-old woman and her 20-year-old son who'd never seen his mom's breast, not since he'd been breastfed. And I guess she uh, she had a kid, like, way later in her reproductive cycle. And so she was, uh, she had very large, milky breasts. Guys had beer glasses. They were holding their beer glasses out, asking her to fill them up. It's true. Part of the checkered history of the Tom Likas show. So L.A.'s Department of Water and Power, if you are a lactation specialist, you might want to get those bids in. You have till March 7th to bid this job. Amazing. So uh, there you go. When they raise your electric rates, the water rates, the sanitation rates, you know, they charge you to rent those uh those sanitation containers you have outside your house, the black, uh, the blue, and the green. Yeah. You know, part of that bill is going to pay a lactation specialist. It's amazing. Need an, ejaculation an ejaculation specialist. Yes, bring somebody in there to uh, to provide services. I hear Bertie Ward wants to bid that job. <laughs> Just a rumor. <laughs> People who know who Bertie Ward is, they're having a great day today. It's a small group, but they're getting a big laugh out of this. Of course, if you Google Bertie Ward, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Because some of that stuff is so disgusting, I can't even, I can't even tell you about the disgusting stuff. But it's all online. Now, Dean's already seen it; he'd be looking it up right now. But I'm telling you, just Google the name Bernie B E R N I E Ward. He's a uh, he's a he's a fellow broadcaster. That's right. Another person who gives this business such a good name. Well, by now he's a former broadcaster, but that's beside the point. Some, but By the way, the first person who looks that name up and reads all the transcripts and everything is going to be richly rewarded. Disturbing. It, well, disturbing. <laughs> I'd be disturbed if I read that and my, no, my father's name was Bernie Wood. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'd be very disturbed. But that's just me. See, I'm so afraid of being sued, I can't even like tell you what I'm talking about. You have to look it up for yourself. It, it just provides you with an awful lot of entertainment. Tell you what. There are people listening to us in San Francisco right now. There's the four people who listen to the AM station we're on at night in San Francisco, where we were opposite Bernie Ward until recently. 
This is just a knee slapping show for them. Bernie was slapping something else. <laughs> anyway, okay, it's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number here. First person who's read the Bernie Ward transcripts, you'll get a gold medal from well not exactly a gold medal, but you'll you'll get all of my admiration. Call in and tell me you've read that. <laughs> Dean's offering to call him up. His phone number is in the transcript. Dean's offering to call him at home. Book him on the show. He's not going to talk. He's, uh, he's not going to talk. No, no, no. He's all, Believe me, all the TV stations in San Francisco have tried to talk to him, and he's uh, he's been telling them that he has to, uh, his attorney says not to talk to anybody. So he'd love to tell his side of the story. But he's been advised not to. All he'll tell you is that he was researching a book. All right. By the way, didn't uh, didn't somebody once call in and say he was dead on our show, and then all these people started calling his show and like uh, trying to do like a eulogy, and they had to be told that he was still alive, and then his producer called over here. See, it, 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 somebody was right. It was career that was going to be dead. They were just a little early, a little ahead of the curve. All right, it's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Tom, you are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Like is show of wide open telephones at one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Will on the Tom Like is show, hello. Hey Tom, uh, which of the two Democratic candidates are you supporting? Um well, uh, we had our primary already in California and I was an Obama supporter. Oh, okay. Uh, any particular reason? Uh, yes. Uh, it was Obama who was always against the war in Iraq, and I'm not convinced that Hillary Clinton's going to end the war anytime soon. Okay, I understand. Um, also, I know that before uh, Edwards dropped out, you were supporting him. I was. And, I, and I'm just curious to know, since you seem to come off as more of a libertarian, not so much of a populist, why you supported him over Obama? Well, keep in mind, uh, well, first of all, because Edwards was against the war in Iraq, too. And made that part of his campaign. I, I might say that Edwards was more of a populist once he ran for president. And frankly, uh, you know, once he got out there on the campaign trail, I was not as much in favor of him as I was before he started when he ran as the vice presidential running mate to John Kerry. Uh, but the bottom line is that uh, his whole thing about uh, the poverty and welfare and stuff, that, that just, uh, I think, alienated a lot of people. The people that I say have to have a stake in something in order for the Democratic Party to win elections. Uh, so uh, I jumped over to Obama. Well, was that uh, after he dropped out or uh, before? You were just kind of leaning slower and slower. Well, it was, it was before he dropped out because it was pretty clear he was not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Um, you know, I... I, I, I somewhat disagree with you because I remember uh, you saying sometime before that John Edwards uh, uh, just took himself out when he uh, took this, you know, anti-corporation, pro-popular right. approach. Um, you know, I, I think it was because uh, he, because his voter, his uh, constituency wasn't as likely to vote for him because you know they're they're not that demographic, uh, they're not that demographic that goes out and vote. You know, I, I sort of disagree in that I, I think his problem was was that that was his sole campaign, not necessarily that he was going for uh, that particular uh, the voting demographic. I think anybody who makes poverty the theme of their campaign, the last person who got away with that and won an election was Lyndon Johnson, yeah. and, and he was a one-termer. All right. Uh, thanks, Tom. Uh, don't taste me, bro. All right. We'll take you out. Don't taste me, bro. Here you go. What did I do? Get off the no way. Don't 
That is good audio. That's better than Kobe style. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Jake on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Uh, I'm doing okay. Good, good. Good to hear. I was just hearing what you said about the uh, DWP, and I can't believe it. Department of Water and Power. That's right. They are uh, they're hiring a lactation specialist. So when are the um, conception specialists coming in? That's what I want to know. When are they going to come and teach us how to probably make a baby if they're teaching us how to feed it? Who knows? Maybe they, maybe they already have them. Yeah. If they're willing to spend taxpayers' money on you know teaching women how to do something that should almost be instinctual, why are we not outsourcing our Department of Water and Power so we can get more for our money? You know what's next? A urination specialist? An inhalation specialist? Oh, I could go for an inhalation specialist. <laughs> All right, everybody, breathe in. <sighs> breathe out. <sighs> That'll be $150,000. Yeah. Well, no, double that because they're charging the state, and we'll rip off the state because we can do that in the contract. Exactly. Yep. All right, so I just wanted to say that. Can you take me down with the bomb group? Here you go. No cost. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Sheila on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, what do you have against the welfare system? Uh, the fact that it's uh, full of lazy, slovenly, drunken, drug-addicted people. That is a load of crap. Oh, yeah. well, who gets welfare then? Uh, fine, upstanding road scholars who are... Uh, just in need of a little spare change. Who gets welfare? It is a hand up, not a hand out. That's well. That's a that's a great cliche. That but, is not but, a cliche. I am an eligibility technician in Riverside County. This is what so I your living, living depends on calling and doing a little PR for what you do. No, you have to work to be on welfare. You cannot be on welfare anymore if you do not have a job. Yes, but uh, what qualifies as a job under the definitions is pretty weak. Okay, and so you don't think that there are people that can only do I think there I jobs? think there should be drug testing and alcohol testing uh, in order to get welfare. There is drug testing, there is alcohol testing, and if you are convicted or found on drugs, you do not qualify for welfare. No, no, I, I'm saying that it should be regular and random, which well, it isn't. that would be a violation of civil rights. Why would that be a violation of civil rights? Because the only time that you should drug test is if... Your safety is on the line by that per person performing a job. Well, that's that's ridiculous. Uh, they are drug testing Major League Baseball players. And I think that's crap, too. Is that unconstitutional? Yes. Why? Absolutely. Because if if my life does not depend on you doing drugs and you're doing your job, more power to you. Uh, I, I don't this happen to agree because you know what? You can't, you can't work and you can't succeed. You can't dig out of a hole if you're drug addicted. You can't. And I suppose you don't believe that that's a disease either. No, I don't. It is. I don't believe it. And by the way, I come from a family where the, uh, I had 18 first cousins, several alcoholics and heroin addicts in my family. So I, I have experience with this. I have been close to it. I have seen it. I have had relatives who stole from us, who and literally... you don't believe that they had a problem, a disease. I don't. No, I, don't, no, I believe a point. disease is what keeps people like you, the poverty pimps, in business. I am not a poverty. Of course person. you are. You make your living on the backs of the, of the disadvantaged. That's that's how you make a living. Yes, and I choose to do this. And so, I of course, you're going to make excuses. You are going to make excuses for all the losers you represent. I am not making excuses yes, for you anybody. Are. I am helping people. Drug abuse is not a disease. It's a choice. Do you think that everybody on welfare is a drug abuser? No. I would probably Those who are should be thrown off welfare. I agree. And those who are uh, habitual drinkers as well. If you can afford booze, you can afford groceries. Unfortunately, I don't have any customers like that. Well, you don't know. You don't know what of, you have. I have a lot of mothers that are in school and working part-time or full-time for minimum wage trying to raise these children that these... Well, Nasty maybe they should just maybe they should just close maybe they should have closed their legs in the first place. 
Well, maybe these men should take some responsibility. Oh, please. Uh, yeah, that's that's another branch of government that I'm sure you enjoy very much, chasing after what are, in many cases, innocent people with similar Social Security numbers and chasing them down and garnishing their wages. Uh, you know, how about birth control for these people? Oh, see, that's, that's another load of crap. I have seven adopted children. We're not talking it's about like you personally. Parents. We're talking about the, the ne'er-do-wells and losers you represent. And you don't think that I was ever in a minimum wage job going to college? And I don't know what you were. You, you, yeah, I, I'm sure, no, I'm sure the way this industry works is, uh, part of getting people out of poverty is hiring people out of poverty to become welfare workers so they can uh, help other people get out of poverty, become welfare workers so they can help other people get out of poverty and you see how it goes on and on. No, you have to have an education, a college degree to do what I do. Uh huh. You can't just be on welfare and say, oh, I know the job. This is the job I chose to do. Yeah. This is what I went to school for because I want to help people. I know that welfare. Oh, and you're doing not. a great job, too. I am. I am doing an excellent job because there are children that are not going to bed hungry tonight because of me. Oh, please. They're the ones who are going to get knocked up in 10 years, and you'll still be doing this in 10 years. You'll be helping them, too. No, they won't. They yes, will they will. Because they will learn. Well, you know, we've had welfare, uh, especially here in Southern California. Uh, we've had lots of money spent on welfare over the past 50 years. How's it been working? Well, it wasn't working till, too well until August of 1996 when they did welfare reform. Mm. Now you can't live on welfare. Now you cannot have more children to get more money. You cannot collect in several counties. But all, some, all some of these connected. breeders continue to press the print button on their human Xerox machines and continue to print out more copies whether they're getting more money or not. And that's your customer base. And you know what? And I'm going to continue to help them because, unfortunately, there's a minority of people that... Take a swing line people. stapler and staple their genitalia. That's how you're going to help them. That won't help anybody. Mm. Because you choose to not have children does not mean that everybody should not be a parent. No, but you're more than happy to take money from my property taxes and elsewhere so I can pay your clients and your salary. Do you think I don't pay taxes? I, you don't pay as much as I do, dear. Oh, no, I don't because I don't make as much money spewing the crap that you spew. Well, let me tell you something. Spewing the crap that I spew is very, very productive. Some of your clients ought to learn how to, how to have a productive living. Some of your clients ought to learn how to make a good living like I do. Maybe they will. Whoopi Goldberg they probably on won't. Until her child For every insane. Whoopi Goldberg, there's 99 people nobody ever heard of who are out there shooting up projects and out there, uh, uh, you know, That's threatening you know people, uh, and crips and lifetime, bloods and gangs and this. Lifetime, there are always going to be people that are going to have minimum wage. That's jobs why you're in a growth industry. That is why you're in a growth industry, dear. And it's lucrative for me, too. I'm sure it is. The difference between you and I, I am actually productive. You no, the difference, difference between you and I is your paycheck comes out of my pocket. So I should say thank you. Yeah, you certainly should. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Michael. Uh, I wanted to talk about the DWE um as well, uh, DW the, the DWP. Oh, DWP. Sorry, but um, I think that's ridiculous that uh, they're um, buying specialists to feed women or uh, teach women how to breastfeed their children. I think they should probably invest that in uh, the future water supply because the Colorado River is dying out. Well, that would be a good idea. If you're going to be spending that money, how about lowering rates? Yeah, man. Um, but also another question. What do you think of our future su uh, water supply? Well, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, well, Lake Mead's like 30 or 50 feet below normal. <laughs> the what? Lake Mead at Hoover Dam. It's 50 feet like below level. Below what oh, I see what you're saying. All right. Uh, well, no, we're going to have problems. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Do you have any suggestions for anybody? Move out? <laughs> well, it's not a matter of moving out because this problem exists in a lot of places. Global warming is uh, one of the causes. Yeah. You know, we've got droughts all over the place, and California has particularly had problems with droughts. 
And Southern California, even worse. Yeah. So, but the thing is, if, uh, you know, I'm not an expert. But they, if DWP is going to hire a consultant, instead of hiring, hiring a consultant in breast pumps, uh, they ought to be hiring a consultant on where we're going to get water from. That would be a good idea. I'll tell you that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just have a problem with you calling women dumb bitches. I don't see where you get off. Well, I only do it when they are dumb bitches. Yeah, but it's just such a derogatory term. You cannot find any other words in your vocabulary just to express how you feel. Oh, yeah. Dumb whores, uh, stupid broads. There's plenty of words in my vocabulary. You're not even watching uh, I'm a, Why are you on I'm, the radio? This is I'm over the hill ridiculous. sluts. I mean, I'm, I'm like a thesaurus. I got plenty of words. It's the Dom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Gene on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tom. Can you hear me? Why, yes. I just, um, it's a little off topic from some of the other things you've touched on this evening, but I'm curious. Um, you, you've alluded in the past um, to the fact that you uh, see a psychiatrist. I have, an, I have not alluded to the fact that I see a psychologist. I have been open about it. Yeah, and I, I guess I've never, um, I mean, I listen to you sort of uh, in a pedestrian fashion, not not every night, not, you know, for huge chunks of time, but when I'm um, in the car. And I, I just wonder, may I ask what the, I mean, what are you, what's the, what are you, what for? What? I mean, what? Why do you see a psychologist? Is there something you're trying to resolve? I mean, it just seems slightly ironic to me because you appear to have everything so figured out. Actually, that's part of it. Uh, if you knew anything about therapy, uh, you would know that uh, once you have resolved your issues, uh, that it's a good idea to go in there and uh, just keep yourself on the uh, straight and narrow, keep yourself on track. Uh, so most of what I tell my therapist is that I've got nothing to complain about. I'm happy, happy, happy. So complacency is the basis for it? Don't be an idiot. <laughs> I never my said... Dear, I am not an idiot. If I'm I was complacent, I wouldn't be seeing a therapist. No, I, I just wonder because, you know, you seem to be so opposed to crutches and, and you're so hard on that lady that just called about... Uh, it's no more, it there. is no more a crutch than going in and giving your car a tune-up is a crutch. Now, Tom, I think you're kidding yourself. It's definitely a crutch. Why would you say that? Um, I think if you're... Have you ever been to therapy? Have I been to therapy uh, after after my father passed away? Yes, I did, for uh -huh. brief. For what, a week? I mean, it wasn't, a, it wasn't something that I required after the period of grief had ended. I, I don't require it. it. You know what? I could stop doing it. And in fact, I've gone periods where I have stopped doing it. Hmm. I just think it's... I think it's um, it's ironic for someone who, as I said, is is so opposed to to people. Um, well, and uh, you know, using crutches. well, clearly, if you knew anything about therapy, you would know why it's a good thing. I just told you I have some personal experience. From oh, it. come on! I mean, you I'm have thinking. minimal experience. I've been going now for eight years. You have no experience compared to me. Well, there again, eight years sounds like far. I mean, just I guess a prolonged period of time, which which would qualify it as a crutch. Well, you can say that if you will, but uh, again, I have stopped uh, for months at a time, and uh, when I feel I've got nothing left to say, I do stop. Hmm. Well, I, I do think you were very um, you were very hard on that woman that was... I mean, I, you know, I don't care what your personal opinion is about welfare. There are people who definitely... She deserved it. it. Well, someone like yourself who has, has made a... I mean, anyway... Anyway, I just something like somebody like myself who what? Go ahead and finish the thought there. Well, you, in a nutshell, I mean, what are you? You, you clip coupons, you chase women, you get on the radio. Block what is wrong? With, what is wrong with those things? You, you clip coupons. You say it like I'm shooting people or something. I clip coupons and I chase women. Can you tell me what's wrong with either one of those activities? Well, I, I just think you're you're rather simple, and and you seem to be. I, I don't think you're as smart as you think you are. Let me really? Say it that way. Well, hey, let me tell you how smart I am. Uh, 
I'm here making a seven-figure salary talking to you, who's getting nothing out of this experience whatsoever. Well, You're just Chris from I know. Who's the smart that's one here? So who's the smart one here? Well, I, I think my IQ... I figured out a way. Up. I figured out a way to get you to be grist from my mill at no expense to me while I make a seven-figure income having a conversation with you. Who's the idiot here? My IQ could dribble yours. I, well, so. fine. I'll tell you what. We'll go have an IQ test. But in the meantime, who has the uh, upper hand here? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't play small games with small people. I so mean, you sure. had you spent your time dialing in and talking to the streeter and getting on hold and then getting on the air. Me, I sit here with a glass of wine, hanging out, having a conversation, and walking home with a seven-figure paycheck. Yeah, and I'm Mom, an idiot. Mom, I'm an I'm idiot. Sure. I'm sure. And I can say, in your infinite wisdom, you, you know that that is not the best of all possible worlds. That's what you sell on your radio show, but you yourself know, or you wouldn't go to a shrink, that that is not the best well, of all Well, again, possible just world. because you're ignorant about the benefits of psychiatry and psychology uh, doesn't mean that uh, it's going to change my opinion or anyone else's opinion by that uh, matter. Uh, it makes uh, no difference at all. I'm the happiest man on earth. I, I have a great life. I make great money. I own two great houses and two great locations. I travel around the world and I do what I please. I get the best seats at every sporting event, every restaurant I go to. I, I have no woman nagging or haranguing or harassing me. I have female company when I want it and not when I don't. There's not a bad thing to say, which is exactly what I told my therapist yesterday morning. Well, I think the reason you repeat this so often is because you're still trying to convince yourself. Well, I know it as an amateur, as an amateur psychiatrist as yourself, I'm sure that uh, sounds like it makes a lot of sense. But the only reason I'm saying it is because you're asking me about it. Well, Tom, Tom, I just think you can't criticize other people. Sure, I can. Watch me. If you yourself Watch me. One. Watch me. You yourself Watch me. One. Watch me. And I think you've, you've Watch also me. alluded to the fact that you drink Watch a me. lot. So you yourself. Oh, I you drink a lot. Now I'm an alcoholic, too, because I'm having a glass of wine. I'm an alcoholic. So, yeah, again, but I think you're I, the one with the issues here, alcoholic, darling. But you darling, as an aging, bitter, unmarried individual, I, I understand your anger. I do. Who said I was unmarried? Oh, please. No man could stand to listen to that voice. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, Tom. Yeah, what is your husband's name? Sucker? <laughs> nice try, Tom. Nice try. What is your husband's name? Why do I have to say my husband's name? Because you don't have a, you I mean, don't have a husband. What does that add? Nobody does that add? nobody listening point? believes you have a husband. Nobody. Well, I, I, that's my marriage is immaterial. What marriage? Conversation. The one you're imagining? Oh, please, give me a break. Give me a break. Okay, Tom. Um, I think you might need to set up another appointment with your shrink. Oh, there you go. Oh, look at that oogie. And your shrink. Let's know how angry you are. I don't think it's anger. I think sure it's, it it's, is. It's, sure oh, it is. You, you're just an angry individual. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Just an angry, angry, bitter old bag, aging, hey, hey, past your prime. Angry, it takes one to know one. I mean, you're, you made a serial, uh, program out of one conversation. I'm I mean, not the least bit angry. It's just a big rant. I am not the night, least bit angry. Well, how would you know unless you're listening night after night? Thank you for uh, being a regular uh, customer. Like I told you, it's accidental. When I oh, it's an accident that happens over and over and over. It's amazing you know, the luck you have. You have the same accident because you know what I do night after night, and that, yet you accidentally tune in. Like I said. Do you realize the logic now is like lacking here, darling? I know you like to sound like you're intelligent and more intelligent than I am. I'd like you to explain how you accidentally tuned in once, but you know what I do night after night after night. I want you to explain that. Re uh, re reconcile that for me, please. Tom, I, I want you to reconcile what I just said. Well, let's let, I want to hear you reconcile what you just said. Okay. Since you're so you're intelligent, I'd like to hear you reconcile it. Okay. Your question is, how do I listen to you for bits at a time and hear you? And you accidentally, you accidentally tune in. How do you actually, wait, how do you accidentally tune in? How do you accidentally tune into the show 
and yet you purport to know what I do night, as you say, I'm quoting you, night after night after night. It couldn't be an accident. You're... Do you have an accident you know, night after night after ever, night? Do you have you, who you, has accidents you, night you, after you, night? I, I, mean, I, I mean, drunk drivers, maybe. Who has an accident night after night after night? It's impossible to have an accident night after night I after agree. night. I At some point, on it's point. not Listen an accident you, anymore. Like At accident. some point, it's not an accident anymore. Well, listening to you is like witnessing. At an some accident. point, it's not an accident anymore, is it, sweetheart? Oh, don't deign to call me sweetheart. All right, darling. Please. It isn't an accident, is it? You were lying. Oh, it's not an accident. Tom, Tom, Tom. It, was not, it is not an accident. And you, I've got you on the run, and you can't answer my question, can you? Because there is no question. Answer the question. Did you purport to know what I do night after night after night? Well, look, Did, that's your you phrase. I'm quoting you. Battle. Did you say you. that you know what I do night after night after night? Didn't I hear that phrase from you? Did I hear that phrase from you? Did you say the phrase night after night after night? You Did you? Yes or no? We'll do. All I need is a yes or no. Do you know what I'm doing here night after night after night? The answer is yes, isn't it? Well, my original point. Isn't it? Did you say that? Did you say night at No, I'm not. Now, until you answer this question, you're not going to finish any sentence here, sweetheart. I'm telling you, you said that phrase night after night after night, didn't you? Now, you're not going to finish any sentence here until you answer the question. Night after night after night, did you purport to know what I do on the air night after night after night? Did you? I, I'm not. You know, I'm putting you on hold and asking the question and then giving you an opportunity to answer. Was that your phrase? Did you say that you hear what I'm doing night after night after night? Yes or no? It is. Ah. That's a yes or a no. I'll ask the question again. Night after night after night. That phrase came from you, did it not, darling? Your show's not <laughs> Yes or no is the only response. Did you say the phrase night after night after night? Yes or no? Your show's right. Did you say the phrase night after night after night? Yes or no? I say the what? Right. Did you say it's a yes or no? One syllable answer. Did you say the phrase night after night after night? Yes or no? Your shows are. I Did you say the phrase? Uh, you're never going to get a sentence out of this program until you answer this question. You can say no, and then we can play the tape back and embarrass you. Did you say the phrase night after night after night in relation to this program? Did you? Yes or no? Oh, my gosh. You are. Did you say the phrase night after night after night? Yes or no? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Idiot. She hung herself. She claims to have tuned in by accident, and then she starts to talk about what I do night after night after night. You can't listen by accident night after night after night. It is no longer an accident. Now it's a habit. And I know you're still listening to me now, you over-the-hell bitch. You old bag. Jesus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Richard on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great. I have less than a minute. Uh, well, I just wanted to say uh, that uh, I work for the DWP, and um, I have a feeling that everybody's getting the wrong impression about these uh, nurturing classes. Um, what it, what is happening is it's uh, it's given away uh, by volunteers at the community hospital. It's advertised at the uh, at the job. But uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. They are and, putting uh, out a contract, and they're going to pay someone to do it. And they've been paying someone to do it in the past. Uh, so, you are misinformed. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.